through the notes for volume today. We've got a bunch of different shapes. Feel free to pause the video whenever you need to. If you want to just do a couple shapes a day, that's okay. We just want to make sure that you get the whole thing filled out so that you have the equations for each shape and an example for each one. So we're going to fill out the general equation in the middle where it says equation. And then on the right side where it says volume, we're going to use that shape on the left. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our cube. For our cube, the general equation is volume is equal to length times width times height. Now it doesn't matter what order these go in, just make sure you have all three of them there. So for our cube here, we have a 10 by 10 by 10. So our volume is going to be equal to 10 times 10 times 10. For this one, then we have 10 times 10 times 10. That makes 1,000. And our label when we're solving for volume is going to be the same label used in your picture. But then the label is going to be cubed because you took centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So that makes centimeters cubed. For our rectangular prism, we actually get to use the same equation. Volume is equal to length times width times height. Um, it might be helpful here to recognize that this length times width is actually coming from this bottom rectangle down here. Length times width is just saying the length of 10 times the width of 5. And then we have two of those rectangles stacked on top of each other. So it's really the area of that base being multiplied by the height. So over in our example, we're going to take the length. So our volume is going to be equal to our length of 10 times our width of 5 times the height of 2, which means that for this one, our volume is going to be equal to 100, and our label was centimeters cubed. Okay, so those first two start off pretty easy. Really, it's still pretty easy from there. The key is to realize what kind of shape you have. So for this one, we have a triangular prism. That's really important because it means that the base of our shape is a triangle. The triangles are parallel to each other, making a triangular prism. So I'm going to use a shortcut equation here because it's going to be really helpful later on. So our equation for our triangular prism is that the volume is equal to capital B times H. And this means here the capital B, this is the area of the base. And this H is the height of the prism. And again, I said this is a shortcut equation because we actually get to use the same one later. The key is to recognize here that the area of the base, well, the area of our base, that was this triangle. So first we need to find the area of that triangle, which means we're going to use base times height divided by 2 because that was the area of a triangle. And then we're going to be multiplying by the height of our prism. So there's kind of two parts to this equation, um, but if we break it down, it's, it's still pretty simple. So over here, the base of our triangle was the 4 across the bottom. And the height of the triangle is actually that 6 that's going up the side. And we're going to divide it by 2 because that gives us the area of the triangle. Then we're going to go ahead and multiply by the height of the entire prism, which is our 12. Let's move this on over. So we're going to multiply by 12. So when we go to solve this, 4 times 6 is 24. And divide that by 2, you're at 12. 12 times 12 is 144. And again, our label is centimeters cubed. Okay, using this same concept, we can actually use the exact same equation for our cylinder. So their volume, let's go back. Our volume is equal to capital B times H, where again, this capital B is the area of the base, and this H is the height of the prism, which is actually a cylinder in this case. Our prism, a cylinder, gets that extra little special name because it's got circles there. So it kind of just gave away the key there for our area of the base. The base is a circle, and so our equation for the area of the circle is pi times radius squared, and then we're going to multiply that by h. So for this particular cylinder, we have pi times a radius of 4 squared times the height of the entire thing is 15. And that's going to give us a total volume of 753.6 centimeters cubed. We're going to use the formulas we've already discovered up above. 
to see the relationships and build our new equations for these ones. So for our square pyramid, we're going to actually first visualize it as if it is a rectangular prism. So this rectangular prism has the same base, it's still that square down at the bottom, and that same height of 11.1. .1. And as it turns out, if you have a pyramid and a prism that have those same measurements, it takes three of the pyramids to fill one prism. So really, if I knew the volume of this prism, I could just divide it by three to find out what one third of it is. So that's exactly what we're going to do with our formula. So our formula is going to look like volume equals length times width times height because that was the rectangular prism. But we're going to divide it by three because I only want to know one third of it. I just want to know the pyramid. So for this one, in our example, we're going to have volume is equal to the length was 5.3 times the width was 5.3 times the height was 11.1. .1. Now if I left it there, that would be a rectangular prism. I want the pyramid, so I'm going to divide by 3, and when I do that, I get a final volume of 103.933 yards cubed. Okay, I can use the same concept down below with the cone, because the cone, if I was going to draw this as a prism, again, remember, if it has a circle, it gets a special name. It's not a circular prism, it's a cylinder, but it would take three cones to fill this cylinder. So I can do the same thing. I can take my equation for the volume of the cone and just divide it by three, or sorry, the volume of the cylinder and divide it by three. So that means I'm going to have volume is equal to pi times radius squared times h. That was my cylinder, and I'm going to divide it by three. So when we go to do this example, we have volume equals pi times my radius is 2, let me square that, times h is 6, and I divide by 3. That's going to give me a final volume of 25.12 meters cubed. Okay, for our last shape, we have a sphere. And if I had a cone for this one that had the same radius here of 9, and the same height, which our height here is actually 18, because it's one radius and then another radius, so 18 for that height. If I had a cone that had those same measurements, it would take two of those cones to fill the sphere. So I can go ahead and take the equation we just finished up above for a, a cone and just multiply it by 2. So the volume is going to be equal to pi times radius squared times height divided by 3. That was one cone. And I need two of those, so I'm going to multiply it by two. So that would work um, for this sphere. Although you more commonly will actually see this equation written as volume is equal to four thirds times pi times r cubed, um, which is really the exact same thing. It's just used a little bit of algebraic manipulation so that we got rid of the h and said we would define it as two r's. Um, that gets a little bit more complicated in the conversion of that equation, though. So I'll go ahead and post another video on that, but just make sure you have them both written down. Um, for our actual example, I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom equation because it only requires me to know one measurement of r, and I like that because I feel like I'm less likely to make a mistake. So I'm going to have volume is equal to 4 thirds times pi times my radius is right in that picture is 9 and cubed. Um, so... As you type this into your calculator, just make sure that you're typing in um, 9 cubed and not 9 squared. So that's going to look, on your calculator, you're going to type in the 9. And then there's a little button look like this. It looks like an arrow up. It's called a carrot. Not like the carrot you eat. I'm um, a different kind of carrot. But you're going to type that to access the exponent. And then you're going to type your 3 from there. So when you do all of that for this one, um, you should end up with a final volume of 3,000. And 52.08, and our label is centimeters cubed. So, hopefully, you got all of those notes taken down. If you have any questions, feel free to um, make them in the comments, and I will get back to you as fast as I can.